What's up, Internet? My name is Jake Doxy, and welcome back to another episode of the Doxcast. I'm not going to lie, filming an intro is actually really, really fucking hard. After countless amount of efforts, I've realized this is probably the best we're going to get, so I'm not going to waste any more of my time, and for the length of the intro, I'm not going to waste any more of your time either. So without further ado, let's get straight into the episode. Cool. Alright, we'll get we'll begin. Alright, okay. Before we start, let me say something to you that I say to everyone that comes on, but I will not be saying it to you if it wasn't true. You're sitting here because I find you interesting, and that's because you are an interesting person. I want to learn more about you, how you think, and how you feel. And I'd love to have the opportunity to be able to share this experience. So I really appreciate you coming over. Thank you for sitting down. Ladies and gentlemen, a devoted believer and a curious man that makes him a great leader. This is Mitchell Brown. Oh, what an introduction. <laughs> I hope I live up to that in the next uh, however long we record for. Usually about an hour, hour and a half. But now that I've got the intro, we can relax. <laughs> Great. All right. Yeah. Cool. So, I actually, I've been struggling how to orchestrate this podcast. I really have. I usually plan it all out, but I've been struggling because there's just so many bullet points, bro, that I want to talk to you about. So, I kind of want to let it go freely. You know what I mean? Run me through what you do week to week. What do you, what do you, what's your main focus? Week to week. Uh, you know what? In the last few weeks, it depends on the week you ask me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm in this place where I'm not fully sure, sort of, there's so many moving opportunities and it's like, which one am I going to take? Mm-hmm. Uh, so at the moment, I'll run you through my current week. Okay. This is So we've just moved house. So mm-hmm. we've just moved into Schofields and uh, we had a bit of a, you know, whenever you move house, it's always like a, a drama and you just, We've got a small house, and it's like, how do we have this much stuff? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. so so we moved house, and then upon moving, you know, the real estate agent, they're always like, oh, fix this and fix this and fix this, and they'll sort of stretch it out and make you, mm. you know, renovate the whole house before you leave. But you're not getting the bond back? We're still in discussions yet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but Because I've never heard anyone get it back, eh? We, we, we had to fight really hard for this one. Mm-hmm. Now, thankfully, uh, they haven't noticed all the things that I, I did. Yeah. We're claiming the garage was like that when I arrived. <laughs> to an extent, it was. <laughs> I remember what happened. The garage, I think Pat told me. Well, the garage totally got resin all over it, and so I had to scrape it. We had to, I gurneyed it, everything. It looks like... It looks trash. Okay. <laughs> but also, up in the top corner, uh, there is a huge hole from when I pulled out a beehive <laughs> that had swarmed in the ceiling. <laughs> oh, my God. And so I was laying in bed one day, and I could hear... It was when we first moved in. I could hear bugs, and I thought it was in you know, in, in the ceiling. And I was like, oh, man, this is so distracting. At nighttime, I could hear them like crawling around. And I complained to the real estate agent saying, like, I hear these bugs, hear these bugs. They didn't really do anything about it. And one day I was in the garage uh, in the middle of the night and I, I kept having bees in the garage all the time, all the time working there and heaps of them. <laughs> and they actually, I found out they were super friendly. Okay. And so I used to be working in the garage all the time, and I'd have like a whole handful of bees, and I'd oh try God. and work with one hand where I could, but they'd just crawl all over me. What? I never got stung the entire time. What? And it was such an odd experience, and I was like, where are these bees coming from, and how are they getting in? I thought the next door neighbours must have a hive, and they're yeah. coming through the little the little weep hole, little crack in the, oh, yeah. in the brickwork. That's what I guessed. But anyway, one day I came down, and there was something dripping on the wall. And I came over to it and I touched it. I was like, what the heck? And I could smell it. And I was like, it's honey. What the heck? And I said, the bees are in the ceiling of the garage. Oh, my God. That's crazy. (laughs) So, 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 So it goes. So the garage, and then we've got a second story on top. And so my bedroom actually sat above the beehive. And I thought it was above me as I slept, but it was actually under me. Um, so anyway, I, I didn't know what to do, but I wanted to keep the bees. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't tell the agent or whatever. I just looked up on YouTube how to pull out a beehive and borrowed a suit from a mate at church, <laughs> gave it a crack, and now I still got them. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So that's how the bee story started. That's right. Oh, my god. So now I've been an amateur bee person. What Fire do you call ball. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
um, keeper. Keeper, beekeeper. Yeah, yeah. That's the proper term, isn't it? Uh, and so I don't really know what I'm doing yet. I sort of learn off YouTube, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, Dude, you've, you've given me some of the honey. It's amazing, bro. It's that's amazing. right. You did get some honey. I got it twice. You got it twice. Mm. Wow, that's pretty rare because yeah. I don't have any at all. My wife keeps giving it away until we have none left. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great honey. I tell everyone. I actually took it to work for ages and made everyone try it on site and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told him this guy kind of has these bees in like a like a townhouse type of like block. <laughs> you just have 10,000 bees or whatever you have. That's true. How many is there? Well, in, in, a, in a box, you can have up to 75,000. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so... Tens of thousands is is, is somewhat accurate, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah it's wild. Which is crazy. Yeah, bro, that is, that's crazy. And I was feeling horrible because we don't. I don't have. I have hardly a backyard, and I had my aquaponic system growing veggies and stuff. Mm-hmm. I and I sat get into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I sat the bees uh, sort of above my system so that I could I could work and not have the bees not be in the pathway. So then I pointed the pathway into the neighbor's property. <laughs> and and so in the middle of the day, oh, man, like there's there's thousands of bees coming and going. I felt tens really, of thousands. Yeah, tens of thousands, actually. Yeah. And I felt bad because, you know, they hadn't complained or whatever, but I was like, oh, this isn't too good. So actually I moved them to my uncle's house. But now that we've moved to our property now, I'll bring them, bring yeah. them back, yeah. and uh, yeah, that's good. That's cool. How yeah. much work have, does it take to run a be a big keeper? You know what I mean? Look after it oh, and stuff. Hardly any. Okay. Um, once you know what you're doing and you know what you're looking for, it's like 15 minutes, maybe every two weeks, kind oh, of thing. Yeah. And then when you harvest, depending on your hive setup, um, yeah, that might be a few hours. And how um, often do you harvest? Oh, maybe two or three times a year. Oh, that's not that much. I thought. Yeah. I thought it would be like every month. It really it depends on they call it the honey flow. Okay. It depends on how much stuff's flowering, what the weather's oh, yeah. like, um, like, what they have available around them to get exactly. pollen from and stuff. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, depending on the weather, you can be harvesting a lot. Yeah. And how often do you get stung? Uh. Hmm. Good question. Not much. <laughs> yeah. When I took the bees out, I got stung eight times oh, that day. Wow. I was so sick that night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but generally they're all right. Mm-hmm. Once you sort of open up the hive and they get a bit annoyed because you've just ripped the roof off their house, yeah, yeah. Uh, then they're actually all right. They don't actually really bother you. Mm-hmm. Um, you kind of work around them and you tell them to move um, and um, and then they're just fine. They're just concentrating on doing their thing. Mm-hmm. So not often. And you always suit up every yeah. time you've got to do it? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen those people who don't wear suits yeah. and no gloves or whatever. Yeah. They're crazy. You've seen the ones where the guy just sits there and he like puts the queen onto his chest and he just lets the entire bee colony like submerge his body. <laughs> He's like a suit. He's like a <laughs> suit of bees. Wow. Yeah. No, I haven't seen that. It's cool. I've seen one that one girl does it for like her pregnancy photos. She's there pregnant oh, and gets covered in bees for her, oh my her photos yeah that's nuts yeah that's, that's not me though <laughs> no. goodness me now i like that no <laughs> you shoot me if i uh, ever try to do that <laughs> yeah yeah very cool mm. we brushed past um your how do, what do you call it the system you have of food aquaponics aquaponics can you run me through what it is absolutely so um aquaponics is a combination of two different types of farming um, aquaculture and uh, what are those aquaponics? Aquaculture and hydroponics. Uh, hydroponics. That's nice. it. And so I took a fucking swing at that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you nailed it! Yeah, <laughs> it's a bullseye. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, so aquaponics is the cultivation of fish, um, or the or you know swimming things, and then hydroponics yeah. is, uh, you know, what. Some people grow, <laughs> you know, indoor tomatoes, as you might put it. Yeah, uh, so that one's the raisin bell. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's a, yeah. The uh, the purple lights in the uh, in the ceiling for um, warmth purposes. Uh, so so that one is just you've got plants, um, and the root system is connected to a constant flow of water. Um, and so because because plants, they don't actually need soil to grow. Okay. Um, it's, they don't actually get their nutrients from soil. They actually get their nutrients from inside the water. The okay. soil's there because it creates 
uh, kind of like a marketplace or it just creates the environment for bacteria, fungus, um, little creatures in the soil um, to work with plants. Mm. And so they go and harvest things out of the soil, like your nutrients, you know, your iron or your magnesium, your phosphorus, what, whatever kind of nutrients. And the actual, this is awesome when I learned this, the actual microorganisms uh, in exchange for sugars from the plant, they will go and seek out the nutrients the plant needs and they'll bring it and they'll do a trade. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, wow. That is cool. Yeah. Wow. So like the little bacteria and things like that. Are totally. Doing that. They're literally trading. They're literally trading. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So a lot of people go, oh, i got weeds in my garden. i got to spray, you know, pesticide or whatever. It ruins your environment in the soil. Mm. And so all your... So you go, oh, I'll get rid of the weeds, but you sort of actually... You just killed the ground, eh? You've killed the ground and you've killed the plants you want to grow. You've actually killed their opportunity to continue to flourish. Hmm. So your weeds aren't a problem. Uh, they're actually trying to benefit your environment. Okay. Um, and so you're better just to rip them out than mm-hmm. to... Or just to keep them, to be honest. But, mm-hmm. you know, some people don't like weeds. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So you've you've got a system that does that. It works with the fish and the and the what do you call them? Yeah, sorry, and and the plants. So how that works is like you basically got you know the big IBC like a thousand liter containers mm-hmm. of water or whatever. Yeah, like the tankers. And yeah, stuff. the tankers. That's right. And so you sort of cut that open and and so that sort of creates your fish base and your fish as they breathe and as they poo that water is circulated and that's super nutrient dense. And that goes into the system to where the plants are all kept. Um, And the plants help get rid of, uh, they call it ammonia for fish. So basically like oxygen, we need oxygen to live, so Mm -hmm. so do fish. Mm -hmm. Um, We get rid of carbon dioxide, fish get rid of ammonia. Mm -hmm. And so the plants get rid of that. Yeah, so your plants are taking the nutrients from the fish, so you're saying you have them in a tank, yep, and they're swimming around, and then the plants actually in the water themselves. Um, some are, um, but they're in uh, like it's called aerated clay. They're like basically pebbles, like clay, clay pebbles, and the plants sit in that and they spread their roots down, and then it kind of works like a toilet, like where all the plants are. It fills up with water, and then mechanically it creates like a vacuum, and it'll flush like a toilet. And so mm-hmm. the, the roots aren't sitting in water the whole time, but they're constantly wet. Mm-hmm. So it, it sort of flushes. How do you make that mechanically flush? Like, did you put like a float on it or like, how does it um, empty? Is it like overflow where it will like tip out into something yeah, else? Yeah. And so, so um, imagine it like, so the overflow pipe is a funnel. Mm-hmm. And so the water gets up to a particular level. And as it flows in, it, it actually then, it sucks the air out of the chamber Mm-hmm. And then it creates actually a vacuum, and so it sucks the water from from the bottom oh, of the basin. Does it inside itself? Yeah. Oh. And, and so then it, then it, it it flushes itself. Oh, that's And cool. so then once the water goes all the way to the bottom, it then sucks air in, and it breaks the um mm-hmm. flush. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's it's called cool. a bell siphon. And how many fish like would you have in this thing? Well, it really really depends. You can um oh you can have. Well, how big is your pond? Yeah. (laughs) How many do you have swimming around in there? Well, I'll admit, I've actually got none at the moment. Okay. Um, But usually, now that we've moved house, oh, I'd love to aim for 50. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. And so they take about two years in order to actually be in a position to then eat. Mm -hmm. Um, But because where I was. You're going to eat them. Yeah. So that's amazing. Oh, for sure. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So then you're having fish and veggies. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, so super sustainable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but where I was living, I just didn't have enough space and everything was in the shade. Mm-hmm. Now, it wasn't a good environment for the fish. So I practiced the system. I got it right. Now we've moved. It's a perfect spot, full sun, everything. It's going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. So now I can get started. And yeah. it's springtime, which is when you put fish in. So it's great. Okay, cool. Yeah. And where would you just go, like a pestle? Where would you try and get this fish out of this, like a pond? Where would you get them from? Um, I... May or may not have gone fishing and collected yeah. fish, but uh, yeah. so that's for some. But you can there's there's like hatcheries that you buy it from. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What type of um, food are you growing? 
at the moment and what do you want to grow in the future? Uh, oh, like, I want to grow everything mm-hmm. at the moment. Oh, oh, it's sort of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's two kind of categories for me because I actually I love herbal medicine and I want to get more into it. So I actually grow medicinal plants, mm-hmm. not... Yeah, not that. <laughs> Actual medicinal plants. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, that's what the hydro. Yeah. 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 When I said indoor tomatoes, I meant uh, yeah. indoor tomatoes. Yeah, that's how you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, heaps of different varieties of like your salad greens, um, all your sort of you sort of standard, you know, herbs for so you like your rosemarys and your thyme and your okay. basil and. Damn, that's mad. Tomatoes and spinach and beetroot and so I've, so for terms of salad varieties at the moment I've got about thirty two different salad oh, cool. varieties that you can just whip up into a salad. Wow, wow! But I want to increase that. And what about is that including herbs? Or is that separate? That's including herbs. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. wow, thirty two different things are going. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's pretty good. So you're obviously aiming to be completely sustainable, way. Eh? Yeah. yeah, sustainable plus. Mm-hmm. So sustain. Me and my oh, family, and then, but then actually have abundance. Yeah, producers for others as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. I've been looking into as much as I can of sustainable. I've been excited to sit down and talk to you about mm-hmm. it because when I move out, that's the first thing I'm going to focus on. Chickens. Yep. I want to copy exactly what you've done. I want to learn more as I get closer to that. Because <laughs> I love the idea, especially eating the fish after. That's so good. Yeah, that's it's so cool. good. That's good. That's amazing. One of my friends, Kelvin, he's going to come back over and do another one because we did a podcast, but it got deleted. Oh, rip. Old hard drive. And he's learning um, solar energy and sustainable energy. Okay. Because he wants to create his own power grid to survive on. Good on him. Yeah. And I never thought about that. Like, that's the next level. I'm like, wow. Go live near a creek. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he wants to do. He yeah. wants to live near a creek. One meter of fall is is what you what you sort of need. Oh, really? Because there's some really cool technology that enable one meter of fall to be actually elevated. It used mm. to be like 10 meters of fall, mm. but now there's some up- updates where it's only, you only need one meter of fall to actually power things. It's like, wow, that's hardly anything. Wow. Um, wow, that's crazy. You, could, do you reckon you could generate that yourself? Or do you need to have an actual flowing creek or something like that? Yeah. Like, like, could you set up your own version of that where you cycle water maybe with a pump? Or do you reckon it would take more power than it would the, use? Yeah, it's impossible to like create an infinite loop. Like, you know, you pump water that gives mm-hmm. you electricity that that creates an abundance of... Mm-hmm. Um, like a fan, like a fan that can't power itself. Because I know it's not 100%. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly like that. You you do need... You either need some mechanical help, like if you had a big tank of water and you mechanically leave it at, you know, up a metre above the ground and then you pumped it into another tank, hypothetically, mm. maybe oh, use yeah. scales or something like that, you could... Like reusing that same... Level yeah, you, just, you just pump the water between mm. two sort of tanks, um, mm. hypothetically, yeah. Mm. Like you just mechanically raise the height and then do it like that. That's that's what I've thought of, but mm-hmm. I don't know really how to do that. I'm sure someone, yeah. some genius somewhere yeah. in the middle of, you know, some third world. So you're putting um, thought into creating your own energy as well? A little bit. Mm-hmm. I have thought of it, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd mm-hmm. be great. I know that that's what we need. Eh? Obviously, you've got a pretty clear f- view of the future. Do you think it's um, necessary that everyone should be a bit more self-sustainable? Well, I think yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. And I think the real telltale sign was when uh, when it all hit the fan. I, I, I can't even remember the dates of it. Um, you mean like February 2020? I'm, when it all hit the fan, like, I'm, oh, I can't is say it, the word on YouTube. No, I, I know, saying. I'm avoiding that yeah. word too. Um, well, yes, but then later, but down the line, as ramification, we had major food shortages. Mm. Like, I remember it got so real for me when I walked into Aldi mm-hmm. and the shelves were like, mm. there, was, there was hardly anything there. There were limits on how many cans you could only get, like, six cans or four yeah. cans or something like that. And then um, let's start about the toilet paper, right? Yeah, the toilet paper was gone. For some reason, that's uh, quite a commodity. You know that was a worldwide thing? I didn't know that. I thought it was just a Sydney thing. Like, it spread a little bit to Dubbo and Orange, but it was the whole planet ran out of toilet paper. And you know what? I remember my teacher telling me in the 2020... No, sorry, the turn of the century, so 1999 to 2000, mm-hmm. um, they thought all the systems were going to crash and everything like that. Um, and my teacher said... 
I stocked up on toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow, it's every crisis is always toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. It's the uh, rare commodity. Yeah. yeah. I heard that, um, and, and I think it's like 60% of a toilet paper sold in Australia is actually manufactured in Australia. It makes no sense that... <laughs> It was a shortage. Yeah. But that guy spent like $10,000 on toilet paper all around because he was hoping to make profit on it and sell it. Yeah. And then it was like very obvious that there was no crisis <laughs> and he tried to take it all back. <clears throat> they said no. <laughs> I know that like, because I know people that live in Dubbo, they were saying they had busloads of people coming in from like Sydney and other places into these towns. Buses and buses filling them up with toilet paper and then leaving You're them. kidding. Yeah, they just cleared oh, out. That's all. hilarious. <laughs> these country towns all the way past Dubbo had nothing. <laughs> nothing left. Oh my God. They cleared out everything. Wow. It was a crazy time. That so you've was been crazy planning time. since then. Sorry, I've sidetracked a little bit. Well, I I had a passion for it. This kind of elevated it um, or, or sped it up. And uh, there was a guy up the road who I went to, who I was at the time going to church with, and he had he had a he had a massive system like eight times the size of mine, and he loves it. And so I really just shadowed him for a while, mm -hmm. um, and that's where I sort of learned how to do it, grew the passion for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but, that's very cool. But now where I'm at, there's lots of acreage, um, and so now I'm gonna plant out. Now I've got space to do fruit trees, like and actually yeah. kind of do aquaponics. Yeah. But now I can do things in the soil, mm -hmm. um, and which I will. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that'd be very cool. Yeah. Fruit trees is something that I would love to do in the future one day. <laughs> yeah. Especially, I love the idea of it. I've been to some, a lot of refrigeration places that people that have their own, like, like farms, and they need a cool room just to run at, like, 15 degrees all yeah, year. Yeah, no way. And, like, some of the stuff blows my mind. Like, it's just, it's all handmade, too, you know what I mean? They haven't got some crazy million-dollar system. They've just got some pipe and cut holes in it and ran it down the back and yeah like that. yeah well that's mine a little pump that just has this little thing that's spinning yeah around. that's it yeah it's all you need yeah that's all you need my 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 whole aquaponic system apart from the ibc the container it's all pallets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. built it all with pallets wow yeah yeah pallets and top yeah, yeah that's cool very <laughs> cool very cool wow um what is your i've heard people talk about um how do you say it like vertical Plants and things like that. Is it vertical? Oh yeah, like vertical walls. Mm. Um, have you ever looked into that? I have actually. Mm -hmm. It's it looks really awesome, mm -hmm. especially in the middle of the house, like where some of them some of them do it. Mm -hmm. It's the same sort of thing. It's it's mm. the plant gets nutrients from the water, so you just provide the water vertically. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then what are they just pumping up like a little bit of sprinkle <clears throat> down to every level? Because yep. I haven't looked into it. Someone just told me about it. Yeah, right. So you'd have well, I've seen people just do it with PVC pipe. Um, you know, you got a you got a pole, and um, and so then you'd have sort of PVC little pieces sort of sticking out at let's say a forty five degree angle, sort of as you go up the pipe, and that's where you plant your little plant, and the roots hang down, and so water goes into the top, and it mm. cycles continually like that, and and so your plants just mm -hmm. grow from there. It's it's a it's a um, space effective way like if you don't have lots of space you you go up you know, mm. it's good do you see another crisis happening you know what i mean like you know how we just had what did we just lose broccoli and some other stuff you know what i mean i think it was like 10 bucks or something bucks wow some places it was a lot of money that's ridiculous yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't think it was that much money here but i know here it was at least nine dollars and stuff like that do you think they were going to go through anything else again oh is everything trying to is there is the is the not the government, but is the people trying to fix that problem? You know what I mean. Make sure we got more of everything. Yeah. Well, I think it's I think it's in everyone's interest, even the government, to have the economy running and for all produce to be produced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, do I think another one's going to come? I actually don't know. Okay. I really don't know. I I, I think uh, I think I think it's so hard to tell. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think there is a huge potential for it to be, mm -hmm. and I totally want to be ready if that ever happens. But even if it doesn't, this is still the direction I want to go in, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, because you won't obviously be putting chemicals and stuff. No you, chemicals. No stuff, way. Yeah. No way. And do you think that it's like a health benefit from oh, doing it? absolutely. You reckon absolutely. the stuff they put on it's bad for you? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Because I've heard that people say... I think the people that make the chemicals that spray on it, 
is the same pit and i'm almost 100 percent sure this is true the people that spray the chemicals is the same company that invented the poison that was in vietnam the yeah what was that green that's right green mustard stuff? gas all that sort of stuff yeah it is absolutely so you know because 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 it's it, a chemical um producer manufacturer they just after the war well, there's no need to do war stuff anymore so let's stay in the same industry and um and, and crops and gmi and uh, pesticides and all that sort of stuff wow. it's quite a clever business move yeah yeah and quite scary when you think about it <laughs> yeah but i guess it's designed to do the same thing just instead of with killing off people it's just starting to kill off bugs isn't it that's so right. just a smaller version of it totally yeah absolutely far out yeah i don't i don't put much thought into it every time i do it, it freaks me out a little bit you know what i mean yeah yeah so well i had a guy who used to work at uh so Woolworths and Coles and everything, uh, like some of the produce is eight months old before it gets put what? fresh on the shelves. What? Yeah. Because Where? they have, they have ma I have a friend that used to work there, massive, and I mean massive warehouses, storehouses, and they just, um, you know, oxygen, when you remove oxygen, mm -hmm. things can't rot. Mm -hmm. And so they just spray nitrogen everywhere and uh and they've developed fantastic ways to preserve food wow um, wow i can imagine some of the nutrients and stuff would go away oh time absolutely as well. absolutely mm. um so it's nowhere near nutrient but it looks fresh mm. and so you go well look at that you bite into that apple and that's because of what they're putting on it like spraying it with stuff absolutely well you've seen yeah. well, if you see apples now you sort of go is there something on it like because they do you know they wax it they coat it in wax oh i didn't know that um I got no idea. I yeah. just buy it and I eat it. <laughs> so it's an edible act, wax. I don't know how edible wax is, but um, but apparently it's it's edible. But um, that's that's oh, yeah. that's pretty old technology in terms wow. of waxing. Eight months. That's yeah. scary, actually. So when we say there's a food shortage, well, there sort of is, but Woolworths hasn't felt the effects yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they make it seem like it has. Yeah. It's very good money. And then they just bump up the prices. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Sneaky, sneaky. I'm loving this. Yeah. <laughs> You're an all the goss today. Yeah. I'm loving yeah. it. I want to have chickens. That's one of my main goals. That's chickens good. Would be cool. That's it. Would you, yeah. would, you, would you eat the chickens as well? Oh, I think I would, but I don't know if I could bring, my, bring myself to doing, killing it, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, it would be a... I've done it. You've done it? I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> I think Pat's done me. He's done it too. Yeah. It's like a barbaric feeling, you know what I mean? Like an ancestral feeling, I bet. Oh, it like, totally it's, is. It's what we had to do until what? How many years, I reckon? 400 years ago, 300 years ago? <laughs> oh, way less. Yeah. I reckon probably when only you reckon 50. Mass, when do you reckon mass production of food started? In the 1700s or before that? I don't reckon it would have been. Well, it's probably... Maybe 1800. Think about when refrigeration's kind of the main keeper of, of those kind of things. Refrigeration's only less than 150 years old. So Mate, pretty it'd be from, yeah it, it'd, from the invention of air yeah. conditioning and stuff. It'd be even less than that. Wow, it's probably only fifty years. Mm. Yeah, you're right. I was assuming that there'd probably be a massive chicken guy that killed them all and then went around like a milkman. <laughs> <Yeah>. The milkman, <laughs> the milkman, and the chicken man. Yeah. That's it. Well, my well, you know, my I think my dad remembers doing it. And so, so that's you know, fifty years. You know, dad's fifty one. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, about fifty years is probably that. Probably that. Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine you'd be interested in, um, in like hunting an animal and surviving on that for a while. Is that something you want to do? I do want to get my uh, license this year. It's my bucket. One, it's almost the only bucket list thing <laughs> yeah. left. Um, I totally would love to do that. Mm -hmm. Like when I kill the chicken, uh, which you're not really supposed to do, apparently. What do you mean? You're not really allowed to. Oh, unless you have a license. Is that what you're saying? To no, like just to kill a chicken. Like, what do you mean you're not allowed to kill a chicken? How do you yeah, eat it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that's the sort of thing. You're not really supposed to do it. Oh, well. You're not even supposed to, like, kill a chicken hmm. um, in a residential house. Hmm. So uh, a friend of mine, <laughs> when he killed the chicken, he told me this is his experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, I think I have the same friend. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> um, he, well, it was surreal. Like, it was totally surreal. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually cried, mm -hmm. not out of like pity or whatever, but because yeah, like, well, well, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, so you, you you pin it down, you grab it by the legs and feathers, and one put on the 
scissors and you just can pull it out and slice it with a knife. <laughs> think so. <laughs> yeah. Let me start that again. It's a surreal <laughs> feeling. Yeah, yeah. And like when it actually happened, I I cried, not out of pity or or joy, um, <laughs> yeah. um, out of accomplishment. Look what I did. But but actually, it was this. It doesn't have more chickens. Like chickens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was so much fun. I'm disappointed it's over. Yeah. But actually, um, it was such a surreal moment because, like, I I took a life. Mm. And it was something was just so. Oh, can I take a guess? Yeah, because I can imagine it feeling like you've done something that was made for you to do, but you never thought you'd ever be able to do it, and you didn't know you were missing it until it happened. That's yeah, Does that makes sense. Totally, totally, yeah. Mm. And so I still think about it and go, like, there was something attractive about it. But it was just something so prim- primal. primal. Yeah, yeah, it was so primal. Mm. It oh, was awesome. And ancestral. Totally. Mm. Totally. I like the Liver King. He throws the word ancestral out a lot, and I've adopted it off him because I've seen like a few of his videos. Have you seen the Liver King? No. He's like this big, big barbaric guy. He used to go by some normal name, and then he's like, now he says, that man is dead. I'm the Liver King. The Liver he's got King. The Liver Queen, his wife, and his liver kids. And they only eat raw meat. No vegetable, no fruit, no nothing. Just raw meat. Wow. And livers and bone marrow. And they'll drink a cup of blood every night. And that's all they eat. And this man, he's massive. He's on the, he's on the juice bar. <laughs> like he's obviously <laughs> on the juice. Yeah, he's obviously on steroids. Chicken and steroids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he like has this book that he's kind of selling about... You know, going back to a barbaric and ancestral lifestyle, he sleeps on the floor, like he doesn't believe in wearing shoes and even shirts. He wears pants because he has to. Not for the me, but I for the sake of I, everyone I think else. I own, they're all nudists or something like that. There you go. But yeah, he promotes an ancestral lifestyle. So I've adopted that word. <laughs> I like that, ancestral. Yeah. But it's true. I want to tap back into that. Mm-hmm. And like I've picked up like foraging. Um, Which and is what? Foraging? What's that? Foraging, like getting your own. Food from when you go walking, essentially, oh, yeah. oh, and so bro, that sounds crazy. It sounds like some of the boys on earth that eat mushrooms. <laughs> That's it. Well, I want to do a mushroom course because I look at mushrooms. I go, I don't know what that is. I'm not touching it. Yeah. But but like my brother Pat, I bought him a, a mushroom knife oh, for yeah, his birthday. Cool. Might be me that. And then on... foraging. I have heard that word. It's from video games. That's where I've heard that word. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And then you go like picking up stuff on your mission, like you find stuff. Boom. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, what's it? Elder Scrolls or whatever's yeah. coming in handy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but where we live, it's fantastic because there's so much property. And there are so many herbs that we would call weeds mm-hmm. and that have so many medicinal purposes. It's insane. Mm-hmm. And so that's my, that's my hobby at the moment is mm-hmm. like... At night, before I go to bed, I got books and I and I read, mm-hmm. and then I go out the next day and I find the herbs that I or oh, the, the weeds that I just so read cool. about. So yeah. it's really cool. Do you reckon that has anything to do with the law of attraction? Do you believe? I know that we're going to religion, so I want to talk about that. But do you believe in the law of attraction as well? As do you think it's the same thing? You, I don't know what you mean. Okay, the law of attraction is the idea that you speak to the universe what you want. You know what I mean? Everything kind of, it's the same belief in that asking you shall receive, uh-huh. and it's just translated differently i guess to speak into the universe and what you and you'll get it so if you spend time thinking about something or you spend time researching something the next day you'll come across that thing you know what i mean if you spend time researching a new car that you just noticed for the next week you've seen it a million times it's like the universe wants you to buy it yeah so i'm wondering if you believe in it just an idea oh i, I think that's totally think it's the same thing as asking you shall receive though oh in my opinion I- I think, yeah, I think that's probably where it has its grounded roots or, mm. or, or the um, it's 100% fulfillment, so to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and because there's so many biblical concepts that we don't think about anymore that had its roots in the Bible, Christianity, that now we have just adopted in society and we go, that's a great principle. Mm-hmm. So that would be totally one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, like another one um, would be... Oh, would would be marriage? You know that was yeah. That's a that was the mm. biblical concept. Mm-hmm. The world was like that's a great idea. Oh, so did, you, did that not exist before Christianity or biblical? Yeah, well, it was. It, it's a, in a biblical sense. Yeah, it's a biblical creation. I did not um, know that. 
Yeah, so yeah. the first wedding is in the very first book, Genesis, oh, yeah. with Adam being presented to Eve. Mm. Um, in fact, marriage is a perfect symbol of, of the Bible timeline because we start with marriage and actually the Bible ends with a marriage of, of heaven. It says coming out of the skies like a bride beautifully dressed for her groom. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then all in the middle, we see this idea of um, marriage still outplaying with uh, God being the faithful um, uh, husband and Israel, his chosen people, being the unfaithful, promiscuous um, uh, wife, <laughs> essentially. Mm -hmm. So there's this idea of, of um, this symbology of marriage. And so then um, in the New Testament, when, when Christ comes and, and he sort of, he is the um, sacrificial lamb that, that was slain for his bride, um, and and so so there's this symbology of of this covenant of marriage. A marriage is supposed to be this eternal or till death do us part idea of you know man and a woman coming together and um, committing their lives to one another. Mm -hmm. And that was supposed to reflect Committee. God's relationship with His creation. Yeah, okay, that um, makes sense. And so Meta so it's like basically a, a metaphor, isn't it? Like that's a, right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And now secular society, we, we've totally changed the, the definition of marriage now. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing yeah, anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's basically a, a bond of law, isn't it? Bond of law and uh, and divorce rate is above, it's 50%. above 50%. Yeah, I know. It's like, wow. Yeah, it's it's freaky. It's freaky. It, it really is freaky. It is. It is. If you were going skydiving and the guy said, <laughs> hey, look, um, we're about to go just so that you know there's you know, uh, it's it's a fifty-seven percent chance that yeah. we're not going to make it yeah. out of it. What would you say? You go, oh, absolutely, sign me up. In fact, I'm going to go three times because the last two didn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I've got a. I've had a bad, a bad mindset towards marriage lately. Not because I don't believe in it, because the statistics are freaky, bro. It's freaky. Yeah. So I'm trying to, you know, change that mindset I've got about it. That's good. That's you know, good. I started asking people. This is not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> I started asking people, how many times do you reckon you'll get married? Like, I, I oh! like, like, but I did it subconsciously. Like, I was curious, like, what, what other people thought. Yeah. I didn't realize how toxic that mindset was. There you go. So now I'm What's the law of attraction it. in that one? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to change it. Because a lot of people were like, what? <laughs> like, shocked. I didn't consider that. And then I'm like, man, maybe I shouldn't think like this. <laughs> this is wrong. That's it. So what, what would be a better question? Um... Is this girl the one? That's probably the best idea. <laughs> How do you know if they're the one? I don't think you know. In my opinion, since you're asking, I don't think you know You know if a girl's the one. You choose whether you're going to give her everything you got or not. Yeah. Because everyone has their flaws. Everyone has their pros and cons. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you just choose straight. You should choose straight away. You know what I mean? Whether you're willing to put up with the worst possible scenario for that person or not. That's good. Yeah. 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 How would you decide if someone is the one because you're a married man are you <laughs> not married but are you married mate yeah yeah married no, we've been married four and a half years engaged. yeah you're married sorry. yeah 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 Shit, who was it someone else sorry i knew that <laughs> <laughs> i made note of that but i just imagined a photo on facebook i'm like wait a minute <laughs> well the photo we've got is we've got a baby on the way yes sorry sorry that was another point I wanted to bring up. Soon. That's it. Yeah. You want to re-record re that part so no, it just I'm sounds good. boring. I'm good. Okay. I don't deserve to live up from that. I'm, I'm we could have painted you in a lot better of a light then. Yeah. But that's that honest of you. I appreciate that. Yeah. That's the blessing of the Docs cast. <laughs> yeah. It's the rule. Station sponsor. It's yeah. The rule. So how would you describe whether someone is the one? Well, it would be I, I, I adore this person. I love this person. Who this person is. Can I see myself... Um, uh, continuing to enjoy getting to know this person for the rest of my life. Because mm. ultimately, you cannot know somebody mm. before you get married to them. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you've lived with them for, um, you know, for, 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 for years, living with someone before you get married actually has a higher chance of divorce rate. Okay. Sorry about that. I did not know that. Um, significantly wow. higher. Um, wow. And so, ooh, there's, there's one tip for you. <laughs> yeah. um, but... Uh, it's you, you. You don't get to, you don't get to know somebody completely in even in five years. Um, mm. And so it's I love everything about you, and I want to be committed to getting to know you better as we grow each other. Mm 
for the rest of our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great answer. That's a good point. I, I did not know that statistic because I've always believed, in my own opinion, to move in with someone sh- as soon, straight away, like straight away. And I'm not, I've got no experience to back it mm. up. It's just because that's all I've ever done. Mm. Every time I get into a relationship, live together straight away. And then, <laughs> you know, because I, I like the idea of getting to know every single thing I could possibly know about them first. Yeah. And not learning about it once I already had bought a house of them or this and that. Totally. But... I'm not in a relationship, so the statistic <laughs> like, plays out. Sorry, my friend. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, I did not not know that. So I'll ch- I might shift that uh, consciously shift that a little bit. There you go. Yeah, cool. That's good. We sidetracked a lot. I'm gonna do a full circle here. What do you spend your week mostly focusing on at the moment? At the moment, <laughs> yes. We've gone down to so the we, we really I did. To. We really I want did. To come back to them as well. That's right. Um, we we divest to the to the bees. I patched the hole, by the way, and the real estate agent doesn't <laughs> hasn't noticed. So that's great. <laughs> Put the bee back in there. <laughs> Put the bee back in there. Yeah. I swear it was there before we moved in. I swear. Yeah. Um. So what am I doing currently? So um. So I used to be a youth pastor. Uh, and so I was in that role for four years, and then I was a chaplain at William Clark College. What's the difference between the two? Sorry, youth pastor, I was at church, so I was at Kelly Anglican, and I started my theological studies there, and then I was there for four years on staff, and then moved to William Clark, and I was there one year. Are you uh, doing the same thing? Like, what's the difference I was in doing the title? Cha- yeah, well, oh. I wasn't at a church. I think that's okay. sort of the main difference. But I was running kind of their chapel programs at, at the school um, and uh, just a completely different environment. Very um, uh, admin-based, mm-hmm. which I struggled at. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, and then kind of – so that was last year. And then this year sort of coming into things, I um, uh, I landed a, a position – where I'm like a missionary, how I've got to raise my own support for it, but essentially it's like a consultancy for other pastors. Um, so a pastor says, you know, we want to achieve this, this, and this, uh, which is usually equipping their congregation to be bold and to be able to feel comfortable to share their faith mm-hmm. uh, amongst growing and other things. And so we come in and we actually we actually help train them and train the church to do a better job of what they're trying to do. Oh, okay, so giving them confidence in a way, is that what you mean? Absolutely, confidence, training, um, yeah, mm. support. Mm. And so I want to support other youth pastors um, who used to do what, who do what I used to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there a reason why you don't want to do it and you decide to take on more of a leadership position in that? Um, better influence, better reach. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I can reach so many more kids indirectly Mm -hmm. Um, so i don't get to be with teenagers which i love Mm -hmm. but i get to be with those who impact teenagers and get to train and equip them to do a better job yeah cool so that's more rewarding i suppose in that sense yeah you definitely have a bigger reach wouldn't you because you're not speaking to 150 people at a time but you're teaching 10 people who are speaking to 150 people at a time that's right well put Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so that's a f- so we call that in, in the this is jargon for you. We call that a faith based role, as in, um, uh, I have to raise my own support through friends, families, connections, contacts, however that sort of runs to actually fund that position, mm-hmm. uh, which takes time. Uh, and so I haven't started there, but that's kind of where I'm going. And so in the meantime, to fund that, uh, I do SEO and SEO and digital marketing. Okay. Um, and so SEO stands for search engine optimization. When you search something on YouTube, sorry, or YouTube or Google or wherever there's a search bar, the search engine gives you what it thinks is most relevant. Mm-hmm. So if you were to search podcast, mm-hmm. sadly, Doxycast wouldn't yeah, be up, up the top. It's hard to find, bro. <laughs> That's right. It's hard to find at the moment. And so yeah. SEO is actually about getting those things seen across mm. the various platforms. Okay. Um, We'll talk later. <laughs> um, but because yeah, um, cool. most websites, in fact, more than 90% of websites never get seen. Mm-hmm. And I mean, when I say never get seen, I mean zero monthly visits. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you think about it, when you Google something, are you going to page 20? No. I'm going past the first four that say add. <laughs> that's right. To the next one or two. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. And that's pretty common with significant number of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so SEO is about improving rankings so that you actually are number one, two, or three, that mm-hmm. kind of idea. Yeah, cool. 
because uh, I know nothing about it. I hope I'm not giving away any of the stuff that you not at all. use as value. But like, what are some skills roughly that yeah, you yeah. use? Absolutely. So on your website or on your platform or whatever, um, having the right... So there's a few things. Keywords, content, and, and I'll say and layout. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably the three things. So layout, when you've got a website, things have to be laid out in a particular way. Things have to be, because um, Google's not a person, it's a machine, it likes things in a particular order so it can read things. Um, and so we call them H1 or H tags. And so it just wants to have a contents page of what's in your website. Mm -hmm. So that's layout. Um, that's fairly easy to do. Um, Is that kind of like a description? Like... You know, like when you click on Google, when you search something, what it comes up underneath it? Yeah, so like that's called the meta tag. Um, and so, is that the same thing or not? Same uh, thing? That's that's same sort of thing, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So it's the meta tag, it's your page description, but then it's also um, inside your actual uh, website, <laughs> you know, you'll have, you'll have a title, then you might have an About Us page, and then you might have, you know, mm. hi, I'm... So and so, and this is all the services we provide. And so Google wants to see title, 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 title for all your services. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really basic. That's uh, when let's delve a little bit deeper, and that would be your keyword research. Mm -hmm. So for whatever industry you're in, you want to have the right keywords. Mm -hmm. So if you were doing air conditioning, you want to have air conditioning mechanic mm -hmm. in your actual website itself. And you want to have all the things associated with air conditioning. So, you know, you want to have refrigeration, um, you want to have electrical, like all the kind of words associated with that industry. Mm. Um, and Sweating. <laughs> yeah. Hot sun. Yeah. Roofs. Dry. <laughs> yeah. That's I'm it. Thirsty. <laughs> Cold. Warm. Yeah. Um, fiberglass really itching. Yeah. <laughs> Be a good idea to like chuck in words like, you know, like, say, Rouse Hill. You know what I mean? Or Grass Hill. That's great. And then your area. So, location or mm. area. Absolutely. So, if you did air conditioning. Young stud. <laughs> young stud. <laughs> babe, model, doxy cast on your air conditioning page. Yeah. Um, so, so what, what do you do now? Are you air conditioning? Or what At are you the refrigeration? Moment, I'm starting an air conditioning business. But yeah. I'm also just got another role as a refrigeration mechanic. Okay. But my main focus is trying to be this. Docs cast, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. And so, well... If I don't have enough time for the other two, I cut them out. Good. Yeah. That's great. That's great. And that's kind of where I'm sort of heading to. Your phase one out is, is your phase one in. Mm -hmm. um, and so you would have air conditioning, mechanic, Rouse Hill. Mm -hmm. That would be your title, you know, and then all your tags would be laid out in, in, in to associate with that. Mm -hmm. And so then you want to have about 800 words on your website. On, at least on your home page, so Google goes, ah, oh, there's actually content here, um, and just making sure you're talking about whatever it is that you do properly, mm -hmm. not spammy, not keyword, not air conditioning mechanic, and then the next word, air conditioning, room refrigeration air conditioning. mechanic, <laughs> air conditioning technician, Google yeah. goes, this is not a sentence. Okay. Oh, it's BS. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing is, well, content. So that's, so keyword, right keywords, and then right content. So enough, enough words. And then enough about those keywords, like, like pictures or videos, or even yeah, pictures, numbers. videos, absolutely that kind of stuff. Um, Would so you that, consider like information to be content? I'm not sure. Absolutely, information is content, and information is key. The more you have, the more Google goes, "Oh, this is great. This is great." Yeah, yeah cool. So they're kind of your basic things that you can do, and then it gets a lot more technical, um, and that's that's where you. That's where you that's might where want you help. Step in. That's right. That's yeah. where I step in. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's very cool. Um, I'm actually going to talk to you more about that because my mum's starting an online business as well at the moment. For what a, you doing? A retirement plan. Um, I won't say it on here because there's nothing you like sure? it at the moment. I got to pee, so let's pause. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll take a pause. All right. Cool. Cool. So, we'll wrap back around again to when we're talking about natural medicine. Because I'm curious about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Because one of my friends, he's studying at uni nanthropology. I know that's the technical term for it. Wow. I didn't um, even know that. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. I just know the layman's terms. Yeah. Okay. And I am keen to have him on here one day. He's very hard by. He lives in, I don't know, Byron Bay, I think. So oh, yeah. I'm curious as to like how much more of a benefit is there in doing this than taking what you can get pharmaceutically. 
That is a great question. Thank you. So the pharmaceutical industry, uh, Lord bless them, there's massive problems with them in so many different levels. I, I actually think there will be a collapse of the pharmaceutical industry at some stage because there is unsustainable growth because okay. um, of their pricing structure, particularly in the US, how it all works. I um, knew it would be a lot worse there. Absolutely. So we're quite blessed in Australia, although it's becoming less so. We're, we're kind of, we're a few steps back from the US. Um, but we don't have a system here where the doctor gets commissioned, does he? They do have that there or we do ha don't have that? Uh, correct, correct, absolutely. There's no commission, although um, although um, commissions aren't the only way. So, um, so a pharmaceutical industry. There's it's actually a book. It's mm -hmm. it's you can get it at Dimmings. It's called Sick Money. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big book. It's a fairly repetitive, and I tried really hard to get through it. And it was a very good technical study of the pharmaceutical industry, particularly in the US. Mm -hmm. And so, commissions. Didn't really become a thing, but well, they sorry, commissions may well have been a thing, but the effectiveness of just a sales rep coming in every week, bringing bagels for the staff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they get free breakfast every Friday, and taking the doctor oh out. Oh my gosh, that's have you seen Big Bang Theory? That's no. what their job is. Penny and Bernadette. I didn't know, but that's their job. Not. Bernadette as much for Penny. That's her job. She's a pharmaceutical sales rep. Hmm. And she goes into the doctors and she brings, she flirts with them and things. Totally, absolutely. Wow. Flirting was totally wow. allowed. They had a fat check. They could take doctors out and have a you know good night out and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And they were able to track results of doctors incrementally, like insanely, just even though they would say, you know, I, I know what you're doing. I'm not going to refer you anymore. Mm -hmm. Actually, they would. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, so it was, it was, yeah, really elusive. Um, and so these sales reps hardly knew anything about the product. Mm -hmm. And whenever questions came up, they just deviate. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but, but very successful. And I guess because they're kind of putting that in their mind, you know what I mean? Like Absolutely. It's like a speed dial for their thoughts to go yeah. straight to that. Because yeah. they relate their attraction to that person to what they're pushing. Totally. And then my, if, my first boss told me, what's the most, he said this to me one day, he goes, it was the first year, he goes, what's the most, like, what's the best decision you can do for a business? And I'm like, I'm not sure. And he took me into the supplier and there was a really, really hot cheek working at the front desk. And then it, I realized from that, go, oh my goodness, bro. What a difference, eh? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I'm going back there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in the same industry, but uh, yeah. I seem to go there often. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, that's that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, uh, so coming back to things, so it, it's th there's a line with how much government funding can actually fund, mm. and um, the pharmaceutical industry continues to to grow, and it's all about profits, 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 profits to its shareholders, uh, as opposed to let's make medical advancements. So R and D continues to get cut. Um, while tweaking an already good product mm. is is actually more economical. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've uh, heard that study too. I just heard that on a podcast. Oh, there you go. Talking about don't spend time trying to advertise as much as you spend money in the product improving it. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. that's right. So it's it's and and that's how the pharmaceutical industry runs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the difference between now I've I've been to my doctor. Mm. And he said, you know, you're taking any things. I said, I'll take herbal medicine. And he was like, ugh. Oh, I really? said, oh, I said, oh, help me understand what, what's wrong. He said, well, the trouble with with natural, you know, herbs and plants and stuff, he says, you don't know what it's going to do to the body. I said, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. He said, well, yeah, it might treat this, but you don't know what else it's going to do. And in my head, I was thinking, well, how is that any different to what you're about to prescribe <laughs> me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it, they get in their minds, you know, about it. Um and so I actually went to a doctor last year and she prescribed me with some turmeric and some honey and some garlic and I thought to myself, Fuck me, why <laughs> why did I come come to the doctor? Did you the have a cold? Knows not, yeah. Yeah, there you go, that would have been the best not, thing for you. <laughs> I was thinking I'm like, I just want some freaking antibiotics, some codrill. I didn't know any better. I'd never heard about medicinal medicine. Well it takes four years for your body to recover from a round of antibiotics. Wow. It ruins your body. And wow. Australia has such an overprescription of antibiotics. We're the top we're at number one in the world. Mm -hmm. 
which is not a trophy worth yeah. holding. Wow, I did not know that. Absolutely. And so, because it, it clears out everything. It's not selective. Mm-hmm. It doesn't go, oh, this is good and this is bad. It just goes, oh, all gone. Um, so it ruins, ruins wow. your body. And I know that it only, if you have a cold and it lasts an average of 12 to 13 days, it'll only, I think, beat it by one to two days max. Like, you're going to go for 11 days of a cold symptom anyway. You might be a day. There you go. And yeah. now you've just ruined as your as immune system. As opposed to having no medicine, not yeah. even any herbs or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And now you've just ruined your gut health for the next four years. And mm-hmm. so you're more susceptible next year till mm-hmm. the cold or next, you know, whenever it is. And then you continue to have any, it, you actually, you, ne- you, never incre- you never improve, you always decrease. Mm-hmm. I watched this crazy video about, it's by a channel called Gazerk Gazerk. It's hard to spell, but if you, people, <laughs> people look up in a nutshell, that's how they can find it. Oh, yeah. And they have great scientific um, descriptions of how things work. And a, great, a good animation to keep it fun as well. And they talked about the war on antibiotics and how the human body can never, you'll never win um, against bacteria with antibiotics because they described it better than I will, but like the good and the bad biotics, I guess, whatever they're called, sure. they'll like attack each other, but the bad will always increase in strength. And we only have pharmaceutical versions that won't increase long enough and able to attack them because our natural antibiotics are not getting stronger. Mm-hmm. So we'll lose that battle over time entirely. And yeah. Pharmaceutical drugs will not work. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if I said what I'm going to say, you get blocked, so we won't say <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but so many things in nature, right, you can't patent, you, you can't intellectual property protect things that are naturally occurring. Mm -hmm. So aspirin is actually the same chemical compound as the willow bark tree, or the bark from the willow tree, I should say. And so what they do is they go, hey, it's actually a pain reliever, this naturally occurring bark off a tree, and they've looked at the chemical compounds of it, they've recreated it in the lab, they've recreated it. Mm. Now they can patent it and sell it for... Mm however much billions of dollars they've made over the last few decades. Yeah, I can imagine it being crazy aspirin. Yeah. yeah. And so a lot of the beneficial drugs we have have roots in natural medicine. Mm-hmm. This is the way God designed the world. Everything we need grows naturally. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess that's how they found it, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, you know, honey, garlic, garlic and turmeric mm-hmm. for your cold. Huh, what do you know? Yeah. You can get garlic ha- capsules now, you know, garlic okay. and horseradish, and that's oh, what my I grandma always shops. gives me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen like a nut shop. They sold all these different things grounded up into a capsule. There yeah. you go. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. now I, I've got all these books and stuff, and so how I go about making my medicine, quite easy. There's heaps of different... So there's a... I can't remember the book, but basically a, a medicine-making guide book. Um, it's a great book, and it goes through like an index of all these herbs I'd never heard about. Sorry, anyone listening, cameras are dying. I have this problem as always, but I'll work on it for the future. Once we get a bit more revenue, then we'll invest in them. But sorry to cut you off, Mitch. We're talking about natural medicine and you were telling me how you, I want to know how you make it. Yeah. So uh, again, lots of books, really helpful. The easiest one is called a tincture. And so that's basically uh, like almost like a fermenting. So you, you get the herbs, whatever it, it is. Um, so it could be, you know, it could be nettle, um, it could be, uh, well, there's so many weeds that we actually pull out, like, so thistle or milk thistle. Uh, so, so anyway, you, you get this stuff, you put it inside a jar, mm-hmm. and depending on the herb, you slightly alter the, the ratio, but you basically sit it in alcohol for two weeks, and it absorbs, the alcohol absorbs the medicinal properties of the plant, mm-hmm. uh, and then you have it in little droppers, and you take a few drops a day. That's oh, it. Damn, that's yeah. mad. <laughs> yeah, that's a heap skill. Super easy. Yeah, I love that. That's yeah. mad. All right, Mitch, I'd love to keep talking to you. I really would, but we're getting towards the end of the hour. Um, the next time we sit down, I want to talk to you in depth about working as a preacher yep. and giving messages and all that because all that interests me, and I think you were born to do it. <laughs> so I'd love to talk to you more about that. And there's a lot of other things as well. You know, you're a captain in school, you're married, you have a kid on the way. I'd love to say this for episode two. I really would, I would, because I just haven't got enough time. But to wrap this up, I have to ask you a question that I do ask everyone that sits down. All right. And that's if someone comes to you who just feels a little bit lost, 
and they're not to, not sure what to do with their life, maybe they're feeling a bit bad, what was some advice you would give that person? That's a great question. And I see it becoming actually a real, I'm going to say, an epidemic. Mm, nice use of the word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to beat that out. <laughs> That's right. I was going to say pandemic, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I see this becoming a, a bigger problem. There's a real growth with people not really knowing what to do with their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would, I would say, well, ultimately, I, I would say that fulfillment is found in the creator. You know, everything that we design in this world has been given a purpose, and its purpose is destined by whoever invented it, its creator. And so too with mankind. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a creator and we are created to um, uh, to fulfill uh, whatever it is that's actually on our heart. Um, so for you, doing a podcast on your heart, you know what, you're actually doing, it's, it's almost, I'd say, almost a form, first form of worship, as in um, the Lord has given you these gifts and when you are going about it, you're doing, you're filling, fulfilling what, the, the way God made us. So, you know, God made mankind and he made us to work the ground. And so when we put our, you know, hands to the wheel and we're working, there's fulfillment. And so when someone is struggling to find what is it that I'm going to do, it's easier to move a rowing boat when it's actually moving. Mm -hmm. And I would say you got to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so uh, so there's a guy, 21, broke both his wrists uh, and couldn't do anything. I felt so sorry for him. Mm -hmm. And so I said, mate, I've got a few hours work for you. Why don't you come work for me? And the life that came into him when he had a few hours work mm -hmm. was amazing. Having responsibility actually is a good counteract to feeling, you know, Lost. Lost. That's mm. right. Which actually sort of almost feels counterintuitive that if you take further responsibility, go volunteer somewhere. Go um, support, you know, different charities, the soup kitchens, or whatever. Go find someone else in need and actually serve them actually brings huge fulfillment. It's the way God designed us. Mm. Well, that's a great answer. I haven't heard anything like that before. More responsibility will help fill the void of feeling lost. Mm. Makes sense, doesn't it? Makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah, I love it. All right, Mitch. I really appreciate you for coming over today. <laughs> Thank you for sitting down. Thanks, Jake. Thanks for having me. I look forward to the next time. Yeah, for sure.